Peggy 16. Prince of Persia the Forgotten Sands is a chunk of the prince's life where we don't know what happened to him. In between the Sands of Time and Warrior Within, there's a gap of seven years. So we're using this space to reintroduce the prince as he was uh, from Sands of Time. We're going back to the roots. We're going back into the Sands of Time feel. So a mix of charm with adventure. This little twist, this little element of magic that is so characteristic of uh, Arabian Nights, the Prince of Persia universe has this very distinct flavor. The game kind of follows the prince on an adventure in his brother's kingdom. He arrives to find it under attack. Malik, this is madness. Malik is the prince's older brother. He's doing what he can for his people, but he makes the wrong choice, which releases the sand army. It saves his kingdom from the invading army, but the prince who's had a little bit of experience with magical things knows that these things come at a little bit of a cost. This army has a definite cost. We want to make sure to respect the essence of the game. The first time I played Send of Time, it was like... Uh, like the fluidity, the agility, the elasticity of the move were incredible. I think it's really the prince's acrobatic prowess that make him uh, stand out. The wall run for me will never get tired of. It's the epic move that people know from the original trilogy. We're bringing back all that. Run on the wall, uh, column jump, acrobatic pole jumps. It's the, the move set from the Sands of Time Prince. The control scheme that he has is really the same as, uh, as before. It's going to feel right to people. The way the rewind looks, it's the same ability, something people are familiar with. We used the Anvil engine to build uh, the Forgotten Sands. It was an engine that was built uh, internally at Ubisoft Montreal, originally for Assassin's Creed. It allows us to really have a powerfully built environment. We can have up to 50 enemies on the screen at once. This makes for really huge battles. Massive battle scenes that happen in the distance, the type of stuff that was maybe implied in the Sands of Time, but we can show it. The architecture itself is very detailed, very fine. We're really going into that Arabian Nights, Persian feel. There's a lot of emphasis on the beauty of the surroundings in the game. The rooms are big. We want the players to want to explore every nook and cranny of the environment. Every aspect of the game is very handcrafted. There's details everywhere. We wanted to invent on top of that and bring a new flavor. There is the power of the elements. Uh, fire, earth, air, water. I love the water freeze power. That's the thing that I, I can't stop watching people playing the game when they're doing that. The, the jumps back and forth, the, the fact that you have to use timing to kind of stop and start. Players are going to come in feeling charged up, eager to see where like, this road is going to take them. We have the core base and the acrobatics. On top of that, we've added the power over nature, the manipulation of the environment, the 50 enemy battles, the epic boss battles. There's so much in this to bring you back in. It's the game you should play if you like the original trilogy.